Korea has four very distinct seasons. It is now in the middle of autumn, a glorious season which brings nature's generosity to the mountains and fields alike. A season of blessings and prosperity. Mungyong and Sangju in Gyeongsangbokdo province are awash in the dazzling autumn colors of Korea. In the Joseon era, Mungyang Seje was an important gateway linking the southeastern region to Hanyang, present-day Seoul. In autumn, the mountain pass known for its natural beauty, cultural relics, and fall foliage attracts numerous visitors. John Stanmeyer and Hyunho Kim among them. But it's wonderful. Yeah, I like this, this is, kind of weather. Since the autumn, yeah, this um, definitely is the best. You know, season to travel in Korea. Looks like a perfect place for it. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful here. A lot of colors. There's red, green, yellow. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it reminds me of home. Really? Yeah, it reminds me here a lot of uh, where I live in western Massachusetts. In oh, fact, yeah. almost, uh, almost identical. Mm. We have these types of lovely, uh, lovely rivers and uh, yeah it's lovely here very peaceful and really incredibly meditative yeah john sees his hometown in the scenery of moon seje he points his camera to a yellow ginkgo tree it's more than a painting they're so alive the trees after focusing on the tree for some time john shakes his camera as if in a spasm. Ordinarily, people would stay still to avoid blurry photos, but John manipulates his camera differently to present his natural surroundings from a different dimension. We're trying to get this jingle tree blurry, right? Uh, the, the way I enjoy photographing trees is uh, in this sense of motion um, where I'll, I'll either be walking or, or moving yeah. the camera and painting with the shape of the tree and uh, and it's just quite lovely yeah I can see I don't I mean I love how the the, the line yeah, becomes yeah. fatter and, and the colors and also like um, there's a fire you know around this oh, everywhere. Tea, something like that. everywhere the wonderful thing is that Every image is, is, is just so different and unique. And uh, it's, it's a real dance. Trees, trees in motion. Trees are moving all the time, not just uh, by the wind, but they're moving by their growth. They are incredibly alive. Trees are wonderfully alive and move but move at, in tree time. They, they, they move in earth time, not in human time. In, in this project that I did on trees uh, for around seven years, I've photographed in around 30 countries. I photographed trees in the act of my own motion, uh, whether uh, I'm photographing out of the window of a, of a moving car, back of a motor scooter or a bicycle, or, or in, the, in the physical act of walking. Uh, and, and moving while, while holding my camera. It was a wonderful connection, uh, on, a, on a very deeply personal project and a very deeply personal level that I'd been photographing for so many years. Uh, and it was a pleasure to, uh, to have that, that, that fire and, and interest uh, brought out in me um, standing before these incredibly majestic trees. Uh, in their full fall color. American photographer John Stanmeyer, the recipient of the 2013 World Press Photo and co-founder of the acclaimed Seven Photo Agency, has lived in Asia for more than 20 years and witnessed and recorded most of the region's historical moments. His
His photographs are famous for their sensitive portrayals of painful tragedies, nature's greatness, and disappearing cultures. Well, this town, Mungyong, is very famous for apples, as you can see here. <laughs> yeah, these are apples of brilliance and scale that I've that I only see when they're imported. We don't, we don't oh, have yeah. this size of apples. Because this is the harvest season, so it's you know, the biggest size. I think. Fall, the season of bountiful harvest, and Korea is right in the middle of it. The two travel mates meet a couple working in the orchard. This is the busiest time of the year for these farmers, harvesting the apples they've tended to so lovingly. He's incredibly gentle when he takes it off. So what's the secret of taking off the apple? Ah! It's like a little release. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. So I come in. I must need two hands. Oh, yeah. Thank you. This way. Then we have to hold it as if it's the most incredibly sacred. Yes, the uh, the golden apples. What's a gotsike mean? Gotsi, this um, this part. Oh, the stem. Yeah, it's, uh, Everyone has a good gotsi. Even the ladder is this brilliant-looking, bizarre ladder. They made themselves. It's just beautiful. Yeah, it should be a. It should be a museum piece. The couple is careful with each and every apple. Just a scratch would make it unmarketable, so they must be very attentive when handling the apples. So this is their famous apple? Wow. It's just, it's just incredible. No much. My goodness. The fruit is a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a 그래서 여기 사과가 제일 맛있고. How do they harvest the apples? Do they, is it all done by hand or do they use any machinery? 다음 주부터 네. 이제 아주머니들이 한 20명 들어와 여기 아 사과를 바로. 그러면 계속해서 한 열을 따야 돼. If I come, can I um, can I pick apples and work for apples? Because these are amazing. 다음 주에 같이 와고 오면 자기도 같이 따는 거 해도 되겠냐고. 네. 너무 맛있다고. <웃음> just, just pay me an apples. 여 사과 따는 사람 또 마음씨도 착해야지 네. 받아줘요. 마음과 정성을 다 해가지고. 이걸 먹, 먹는 사람들 고객들을 생각해서 응. 공을 들여서 지었기 때문에 아. 아무나 이거 사과 따는 것도 아무나 따. Uh, <웃음> I can be a little bit naughty, but I, I'll be good. I'll be nice. Can you, I, I'm, I'm curious why, why all this aluminium rolled out along the floor here. 태양 빛이 위에서만 받으면은 이 사과가 이 보는 데만 이 받치잖아요. 그래서 밑으로 반사돼 가지고 여기까지 이 사과가 빛이 들어가라고. 그래 골고루 전체적으로 골고루 익으라고. So the sun brings out the sweetness. Yeah. It makes for great lighting. Phot photographically, they have a quite a. It's, it's like a, it's like a Christo artwork. The farmers have given tender, loving care to these apples, as if creating a piece of art. John also applies the same level of dedication to his photographs. The actual colors of these Fuji apples, very unique red, magenta, uh, in connection to the, to the brightness of their leaves. And uh, I, I just enjoyed um, the, the, the sort of pictorial, painterly aspect of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the orchard. Uh, with the ground being so incredibly illuminated uh, by the reflection of the sky. And uh, when we were leaving, uh, getting ready to go in the car, there were these metallic doors that led into the, the juice-making side of the apple uh, business there in a, in a wonderfully strange setting with, with, with this great 
light, fluorescent light above him that you know, is, is X marks the spot. Blades of a helicopter, uh, that's the spot, the X that he is just sort of wonderfully standing under instead of upon. And it's just a, a, a wonderful memory for me of the man with the great hat. It's really, really good weather to Actually, cycle in. Gorgeous football. weather and to be cycling through a field. I can't go so slow. So tell me a bit about your bicycling trip around the world. I mean, I was just like a little bit tired of what I was doing, so I just quit it. And so I just bought my bicycle and I just left Korea. And where did you start? Where was your starting point? China. And I cycled through China, Southeast Asia, Middle Asia, Europe, and South America. Central America, North America, a little bit, not, you know, everywhere. What was the inspirational enlightenment that you've sort of pieced together yeah, post-trip I mean, like that? First of all, it's all about myself, who I am and what I am. And I found, a, like, um, good people. That's all I learned, I think. What I got to meet and spend a lot of time with was uh, Hyun Ho, uh, my travel companion, my colleague and friend of the, uh, of the journey you know, throughout uh, the southern part of South Korea. And uh, he's an incredibly handsome fellow. He always would stand and naturally be so poetic and statuesque. I very much uh, appreciate of my, of my new traveling partner. But the road uh, it, it very much symbolizes the road and path that, that, that he and I have been traveling. The field seems to be dyed in gold. When the rice ripens to a brilliant golden hue, the busiest time for farmers begins. Fall is the most important season of the year for these rice farmers. Freshly harvested rice pours out of a combine. Sangju rice is known for its exceptional taste, thanks to the fertile fields watered by the Nakdonggang River. <laughs> Yeah. 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 This combine is the only machine and the much needed helper for the short handed village. Never seen such a small combine before like this. Yeah. Incredibly efficient. Yeah. It would take a few hours or more with five to ten people just to cut this field. Of course. And here he does it in you know 30 minutes. Yeah. Well I think that's the cutest combine I've seen. When did he start mechanizing uh, rice harvesting? That's finally somebody yeah. invented only 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very young. Because it's a very complex yeah. machinery yeah. to be able to cut the, the rice and keep the grass. Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah. Geography would play a role on how the machine is. Who cut the terraces? Did he cut the terraces? Or were they cut uh, a long time ago? Uh, 
근데 이게 물을 잡기 위해서 계단을 만들고 네. 계단을 만들기 위해서 방축을 제방을 네, 쫙 네, 올려가지고 네. 반듯, 반듯하게 만들어 아. 네. 순전히 지게로 저다가 아. 그걸 저다가 넣어서 논을 만들었어 와우 wow. What fascinating history you have The ripened rice waits for farmers In the old days it took much labor and time for farmers to reap the rice manually but now the job has gotten easier with the combine. Moreover, the combine threshes the grains as it reaps, so there is nothing so appreciated as this machine in the undermanned village. Sort of a tornado, this shaft, uh, this pillar of rice uh, as it leaves the combine. I also do enjoy the, 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 the structural integrity of things especially when gravity is involved and creates a shape, a design. Uh, and in this case, it's so textured, uh, every grain of, of rice uh, frozen. It's a sculpture in many ways of, of rice. Autumn in Sangju is rich with the fruits of the harvest. Ironically though, John has done a project about the end of plenty. I heard you did some kind of project about, you know, food. Yeah, or yeah, did a, a, a very in-depth story for National Geographic uh, on, on the food crisis, and we called it The End of Plenty, and uh, it was a, a very important story. Well, if food prices, which they have been uh, rising 10, 20, 30, 40 percent, even higher in certain parts of the world, um, you have uh, uh, economic food starvation, yeah. no longer able to, f to eat uh, either a balanced meal, uh, a healthy meal, or even more than one or two meals a yeah. day. I heard, because, I mean, these days, this population in China, they are eating more than, you know, as they used to <laughs> have, so... Global uh, demand, yeah. uh, uh, the, 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 we looked in China on how the demand for, for the increased consumption of meat, yeah, in, in yeah, many yeah. ways that of pork. Yeah. Uh, the, China doesn't grow enough uh, soybean to, uh, to, to feed the, the, the pigs, yeah, yeah. which are having an enormous rise and in, 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 in increase in consumption. Yeah, right. uh, so they have to import soybeans from Brazil, and they're just you know, burning down the Amazon uh, to make more soybean fields because of this explode, explosion uh, in the demand of meat in China yeah. and uh, that are still we're facing today of how do we feed ourselves and not only how do we feed ourselves but how do we feed ourselves affordably uh, in balance with uh, natural resources, our environment. John traveled to nine countries including China, the Philippines and Peru to document the worldwide food crisis. The imbalance between agricultural output and food consumption has put the world's poorest populations at a greater risk. John takes it upon himself to expose and depict these difficult problems afflicting mankind. Children's loud cheering echoes through the normally quiet village. Fall is the time for school festivals in Korea. Field days in Korean schools aim to build a sense of community among the students. Every culture around the world has yeah, you know, yeah. a field day or with all the flags up, maybe you would call this a bit of an international day international or day, yeah. unity day or, or what have you. But it's uh, almost the same, but it's different, it's small. There was a huge party, I mean, when I was a kid, like, with parents, I don't know, almost a thousand people gathered and enjoyed it. It's a small village, a very nice school. Yeah. They took a walk around the school. And... For this small school with only 40 students, Field Day is a village-wide celebration where parents and villagers join the children in playing games and enjoying the festivities. The student's talent show is like a small gift to all the participants and onlookers gathered here. 
when I go visit my children at their school, um, I do the same thing, and it, it's a wonderful, very family-oriented yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Do, does she get a sense of sort of going back to her youth? No, I think I'm going to go back to my youth. 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 Did his parents come here and run with a parachute on their back? Yeah, yeah. They They've did. always had this crazy yeah. parachute. Thing. I mean, not parachute. This is the first time. But <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, ran together and you know, played uh, games. Uh, okay. Pungmul yeah. Nori, or a Korean folk band performance, is the day's highlight. The cheerful sound of folk music captivates John and prompts him to take out his recorder to capture the merry tune. What would be the name of that type of music, or is there a, a we style? Pungmul, Pungmul Nori, Pungmul Nori. How do you spell that? Uh, P U N G M U L, and Nori means kind of play. We call it, you know, playing this music. Oh, sorry. Samul Nori is a percussion music performed with four instruments: the drums. Buk and Janggu, and the gongs Gwengari and Jing. Having once photographed vanishing folk cultures, John is glad to have encountered Korean folk music in Sangju. So, how did you feel about this performance today? I mean, they're children, they're kids, but I mean, yeah, it sounds interesting. The musicians, uh, yeah. incredibly tight and in tune. I mean, there was a few, you know, I, I, yeah. I could hear a few uh, lost uh, yeah, rhythm yeah, moments. Yeah. But uh, but you know, by and large, holy cow, they were they were brilliant. You recorded this um, performance, Pumulori and Samulori. Can I ask you why you did it? Uh, I I have an absolute obsession and fascination with uh, traditional cultural music. Yeah, uh, I've been doing field recordings uh, for about almost 30 years. Just close your eyes and and you know, listen, and it gives you the theater of the mind. But when you look at a photograph, yeah. uh, it, it, it for me emits sounds in my head. So both uh, field recording uh, and yeah. imagery uh, play a dance together. Hey, there's cafe here. Excellent. Yeah. This, um, what the name of this cafe is? Bus Station. Hey, I could use as much coffee buzzing <laughs> as I can get. Let's yeah. You want to check in? Yeah. <laughs> The two travelers stop by a cozy coffee shop, drawn to its fragrant aroma and a gentle song. There, a special encounter was waiting for them. Beautiful. This time, John picks up a guitar instead of his camera. Bob, you're more than happy to put any words that you want to any of this, because this is actually an Indigo Girls song. It sounds really good. Very nice guitar. Yeah. What inspired her to, uh, to create in this space? The sort of energy wrapped around coffee and art and. Yeah. <laughs> She's um, her playground here, not just cafe. And oh, wonderful. Well, I, I also have a, a, a coffee house um, near to where I live uh, that I have my gallery in. So we have a very, very similar um, connection. <laughs> yeah, no, anytime. I love how you've made this feel like I'm really in your home. Oh, it's really good. I'm really good. 살고 싶은 마음도 들고 상주 살았으면 여기 와서 저도 맨날 이렇게 놀았을 것 같은데. 
These people are just as generous and easygoing as Autumn. They all take a moment to relax and escape from the busy routine. She was a musician that, that, that comes and travels from two, three hours away uh, uh, from her, her, her place that she lives to go and perform at, at this coffee house. She's so committed and, and, and engaged uh, and in love with this coffee house, as I felt the same. Uh, she ended up playing guitar uh, and performing that, that evening there. A beautiful song she had written uh, all about her love uh, of, of, of this coffee house. Persimmon trees are heavy with fruit in autumn. Not fully ripe yet, these persimmons will be dried to make kokkan. Sangju's dried persimmons are so famous that the word kokkan immediately brings up the name Sangju. This year, the persimmons did very well as Sangju suffered no typhoon damages in the summer. With so many trees, yeah. it must take weeks to, to uh to get the persimmons off the tree. Rattle and roll mm -hmm. the tree to, uh... If I were to eat one of these now, it would taste terrible. A little bit. No, not terrible. Do you eat the outside skin? Like an apple? Yeah. Wow, very hard. That's smart. How is it? Slightly bitter. Yeah. It doesn't really have a taste. Yeah, so that's why they're gonna make the dried persimmon. It's gonna be sweeter. Once it's dried. Yeah. Yeah. Is it gonna be upset if I just throw it on the ground? Gonna be the and I'm gonna. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it will become a persimmon tree. Yeah. Uh, well, the pigs are smart. Yeah, yeah. they want to wait to. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to wait. They, they know it. They know yeah. a good persimmon. Yeah. How many weeks does it take to harvest all of these persimmons? This must be a, a very long process. Farmers become very busy when the persimmons turn deep orange in autumn. It's non-stop work, but the fruit of it already makes them feel rich. Well, you really gotta be a tree climber to do this. When the farmer shakes a tree branch, persimmons rain down on John. Careful. Yeah, it's all right, but I've gotta be under, under to, that's all right, I'll just deal with it. It's like hail in a, in a rainstorm. Yeah. So if I go like this, Oh yeah, sorry. Great sound. Persimmons are dried immediately after they are harvested. Thankfully, there are now machines to peel the mounds of persimmons. But the machines can't do everything. Making gokkam still needs the caring human touch. Persimmons are hung up manually one by one and fan dried. Soft, semi dry persimmons are ready in 40 days, and chewy, dried persimmons in 60 days. Yeah, they look like they look like uh, DNA molecules. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Strangely interesting. Yeah. It's, it's like a freezer of a meat market, yeah, but right. it's all persimmons and they're all of the exact same color yeah all right it's bloody cold so 
that's the uh, sort of like a Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on a Christmas tree. You could have a persimmon <laughs> Christmas tree. Uh, it is sort of the season, I guess. Well, now you got still a few weeks, yeah. months away, but there, there are persimmon ornaments. Why do you want to wear it outside? I don't want to wear it outside. How long has she been working here in the persimmon hanging profession? <laughs> so she's been a precision persimmon hanging specialist for yeah. 20 years. It's in another one of these businesses here in South Korea where I don't see any young people working. It's everywhere the same. I mean, they don't want to do this kind of... Because this is incredibly laborious. And, but that, that, that committed... And she's not angry. I mean, she has a smile on her face. Yeah. There's a, a radiance about her. A strength in her eye. No complaint, you know? Yeah. And... and Nowadays, well, by golly, we'd, we'd complain if we did this. It really sort of becomes this uh, sort of fascinating Christmas tree ornamental theater to photograph in. And, and this woman has been a persimmon hanging dryer worker. Wonderful spirit in her. She had an absolute upbeat attitude and passion. I had the, the, the pleasure, shall we say, of, of tasting uh, fresh, ripe persimmon straight off the, the tree. Um, wasn't much flavor. Uh, it was uh, quite hard. Uh, the persimmons actually have a, have a very uh, sort of birth or a, a rebirth uh, later on in the stage uh, in, after dry. And, uh, and when I had a, uh, a persimmon uh, in its dried state, it, it was astronomically different and it was it was it was stupendously delicious it was it was very very unique um, I didn't know it takes so long time to make these dried persimmons I just like to hear about your some project like um, there must be some projects you did for a long time right yeah there's been there's been many as I do much of the work I do is long term but uh, one that I actually uh, spent a lot of time uh, was on a, a book on Balinese spirituality from the about a little over five years uh, of living in Bali. It was uh, a book project turned into a book um, and I photographed it all uh, on a plastic camera called a Holga yeah, 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 using, Holga. using real film. I, I'm deeply committed to, to cultures, especially cultures that are under stress yeah. uh, due to modernity and development. Uh, that's yeah. also why I keep asking yeah. this sort of repeated mantra in my questions when we talk to people about you know, the pressures on their culture, their tradition. Indonesians believe that their lives are connected to another world. Their religious culture, an amalgam of Hinduism and Islam has survived several centuries. John lived in Bali for over five years to explore their spiritual world. He says it's a photographer's duty to record vanishing traditions and cultures. Back in Sangju, there are people looking to get just rewards for their hard labor. They're farmers waiting to auction off their harvested persimmons. Their wait is longer than usual because they had a bumper crop of persimmons this year. Well, these, these gentlemen appear to be waiting in a queue to, uh, yeah. to sell what appears to be persimmons. Yeah. Must be a long... Uh, patient virtue yeah truck after truck how many are there well as far this as the eye can any. see there are more cars over there not being a persimmon oh <laughs> 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 what a lovely couple <laughs> is it like this every day when they come this is the first day. So how much does she think she's going to get for all the, 
persimmons in the back of her truck. What does she want for it? They look like an incredibly happy, lovely couple. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess not every day does somebody walk up and take their picture as they're yeah. sitting in the uh, in the car. Well, I wish you the best of luck getting 70,000 won per box again this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Boxes of persimmons pile up after a wait of three to five hours. Around this time of the year, the market receives, on average, 20,000 20 kilogram boxes per day. The persimmons are sorted by size and variety before being auctioned off the following morning. The bidding finally begins. The commission merchants tense up instantly. They are in fierce competition to buy good quality produce at cheaper prices. In order to ease the intensity of the bidding war, the auctioneer draws the bidder's attention to other persimmons. I guess this is it, huh? I mean, this is all they do. They look in a box. They do this all day long. There are so many boxes, you can see. John takes out his recorder again to record the auctioneer's echoing voice. His chant-like murmur has intrigued the two outsiders. What is he saying? I don't know. I can't, I can't just say anything. I can just sometimes listen to numbers. They so it sounds like a prayer, like a, like a mantra and a, and a prayer. Amazingly, the commission merchants move briskly, according to the auctioneer's mysterious chant. John can't understand a word of it, but he is nonetheless immersed in the mood. He knows what he's saying. Yeah. Definitely a, another language here. It looks like the price is not really good, like uh, 20, 30. And before, but they were getting by the box, the guy said yesterday, yeah. 70, so. It was like less than half. But hold on, they're coming at us. This is uh, three or four uh, persimmon uh, buyers in the act of trying to bid and buy a box or many boxes of persimmons. And the, the interesting part of the persimmon was, was the persimmon auction was, was this. These guys screaming are, are, are these guys. Uh, that gentleman there. Uh, but I would like to go to the next frame. Uh, this is the sound of the persimmon auctioneer. It's absolutely uh, you know, mesmerizing. It, 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 uh, it, it almost sounds like a religious chant. Uh, it, 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 it takes on a an air and ambiance. Of course, what an auctioneer is to do is to build up excitement and and, and, and get people going uh, to bid. And his art is to get everybody all excited. Hold on. 
What is he actually saying here? Can he do it really fast? Like he normally does, yeah. and then can he slow it down? Okay, now he's slowing it down. Now, can you understand him when yeah, he's talking yeah, yeah, fast? Yeah. No, 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 never, never. But when he, when he slowed like it slow, down. Okay, yeah. what, is, is that his job here? Has he always been a persimmon auctioneer? And how long has he been a, a professional produce auctioneer? If you can tell him he's incredibly talented, I have no idea what he's saying, but acoustically, it's it's absolutely mesmerizing. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Sangju has a specialty other than rice and dried persimmons. It's silk, a fabric highly coveted regardless of time. Sangju produces more than 90% of Korea's traditional silk. The silk scarves blowing in the wind are gorgeous and delicate, just like fall colors. Beautiful, look at these. I bet you they're, they're you know, they're priceless. He's so smartly, beautifully dressed, too. Well, this is... <laughs> Did he make that? Uh, how long does it take to, to make a scarf like this? <laughs> Getting threads from silkworms is the first step to making silk fabric. The thread is slowly unwound from boiled cocoons. Then the threads are lumped into skeins and spun. So what's inside of here? That's the uh, that's there's the silk worm inside. Yeah, yeah. 번데기야, 번데기. 번데기. 치토리가 실 뽑을 때 옆에서 번데기 주워 먹는 재미가 대단히 좋았습니다. 그래서 실 뽑는 날은 아주 뭐 맛있는 거를 먹는 날이었죠. Incredible. Oh my goodness, right, right, right. And how many meters of silk is in each one of these cocoons? Each one of these papas. 1,300m에서 1,500m 정도까지. 저 하나에서요? 예, yeah, 하나에서요. In one little cocoon? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, how many little cocoons does it take to make a scarf? That is um, 280 kilometers of silk, or from Seoul to. Then this one is made, and this one is just one. So we'll go to Seoul and we'll go to Seoul. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh oh, is this gonna completely freak out also? Look at that. Gosh, who invents this stuff? It's incredible. Oh, he's taking it from there and putting it on the spool, yeah, goes yeah, the spool, spool goes yeah, over yeah. here, goes over there. Wow. Oh, how cool is this? Silk fabric is completed only after it undergoes numerous manual steps. Machines have substantially lightened human work, but it is still a laborious process. All stages require human touch and supervision, from getting silk threads from cocoons to weaving them into fabric. Yeah, just the thread. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful contraption. How long does it? Yeah, yeah. Is it mad? Is it is it maddening or is it you know is it understandable? 280 가닥입니다 이게. 280 가닥이요 총. 예. 또 가안고 또 가안고 다섯 번을 가져갈 겁니다. 다섯 번을 가져가면 1,400 가닥이 됩니다. 1,400 가닥이 완성이 되면은 배터리 얹어서 날씨로 사용하는 거예요. 
but how long does it take to thread this incredible contraption? I love the simplicity and the color tone. This is where color now actually does have, have, have a wonderful touch to it. Uh, the, the cream and the blue color of the clothing that he himself made. Uh, and of course then blowing in the wind, uh, uh, these absolutely spectacular scarves. I, often editors I work with at National Geographic uh, have pointed out I have a lot of hand uh, photographs in, in, in or I have a lot of hand moments or hands in my, in my photographs. Uh, I guess I'm intrigued, I don't really think about it, but maybe I do. Um, yeah, I like hands. I like things moving around. Sure, you know, uh, this, they're the thing that we, we have on, on our bodies that we probably utilize the most. And I enjoy sort of the, uh, the, the fluidity of, of and position and the art and, and design of what hands are doing. The two men have enjoyed Korea's autumn at a slower pace. Another season is passing for them. It was an absolute brilliant experience yeah. that I, I, I know I'll never forget. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, I'm very pleased to hear that. And what's your, what, what, what was your uh, sort of favorite highlight? I, really, I was really impressed about this coffee place mm. and also old, old couple we met somehow I feel like um, maybe I can be here I mean I want I want to be I want to participate or you know I want to be one of these people I'm listening to you and and I think you and your generation will be the creative spark uh, into these more traditional cultures that were I've worked in a persimmon, you know, uh, hanging, drying room for 30 years, yeah. and she's very happy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a brilliant career and opportunity, and she was thrilled to be able to do it. The younger generation is going to still do that, but they're going to bring other components yeah, yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, what I want. I mean, bring some culture and art and, you know, to this, you know, small towns. You'll be the... Uh, the, the, the the inspiration and the spark to make it happen. Yeah, I'll try. Invite. Let, let's let, let's let, let, if you can uh, invite me back, or I'll come and, and, and ring you and say. Yes, I will. Uh, I will. You know, a couple couple years from now. Yeah. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Thank it's you. A, thank you. It's yeah. a deal. John Stanmeyer wants to be called a reality photographer rather than a photojournalist. He hopes to capture only reality in his frames. This fall, John has met people who wait patiently for their well-deserved rewards. His encounters with these hard-working people are certain to remain as comforting realities in his photographs and his memories.